ski lifts, with their serene ascent and stunning mountain vistas, promise a calming ride on the way to adventure. But what if this tranquil journey took an unexpected turn? Literally. Why did this incident happen? And who was truly responsible? Join me as we question everything about the Gudauri ski lift accident. It's March 16th, 2018 in Georgia, a small scenic country nestled between Europe and Asia. Tourists have ascended high into the Greater Caucasus mountain range to Gudauri Ski Resort for picturesque views and winter sports. The bravest among them heading up past the bunny hills in the snow park, up to the Mount Sedzele chairlift towards the peak of the mountain. With its summit reaching nearly 11,000 feet, this area was occasionally shut down for avalanche warnings. But today, the area was deemed safe, and dozens of skiers had assembled to venture into the free ride ski areas. For a few hours, it's a skier's paradise. Beautiful weather, fresh powder, what could be better? But around 2 p.m., everything changed. The lift stopped momentarily, a routine occurrence for riders. It's usually done for safety reasons and starts back up in a few seconds. But this time, the lift slowly started running in the opposite direction. And as the speed gradually increased, the realization quickly set in that they were all in serious danger. And down at the bottom of the lift, this was all too obvious. Not only was the lift running backwards, but it was reaching double the normal speed, meaning that when the chairs arrived at the loading station, they swung around dangerously, threatening to fly right off the cable. And when a chair of three riders arrived at the station, that's exactly what happened. The chair violently throwing them all to the ground as it detached from the cable. One managed to dodge an oncoming chair and crawl away, but the other two remained trapped underneath the malfunctioning lift, chairs flying by only inches from their heads. At this point, other skiers on the ground began yelling for riders on the lift to jump as they neared the loading station. This collective response played a crucial role in preventing fatalities. Riders jumped as they neared the station, with some opting to jump from more dangerous heights. While most heeded the warnings, some were frozen with fear. And things only intensified when one fully occupied chair arrived at the loading area with three of the riders holding tightly onto the bench. All were thrown from the chair, launched towards onlookers, and the bench swung up at such an angle that it got stuck in place. Now chair after chair came crashing down into a pile of metal carnage, making this situation more dangerous for every rider with each additional impact. After two full minutes of terrifying mayhem, hours in the minds of those involved, the emergency brake was finally engaged, putting an end to the chaos. Since this lift was so long, many tourists were still stuck in the chairs that hadn't yet reached the bottom. Rescuers arrived promptly with snow leveling vehicles to help the riders climb down out of their chairs, with the entire rescue taking about an hour and a half. In all, 11 injuries were sustained, including a broken hand and a concussion. All 11 riders were treated at the hospital, with six being released having only minor injuries. One rider even returned to the mountain that same day, in an effort to taunt his own fate, I imagine. So, what happened here? It seems like this kind of accident should be impossible. Well, the culprit was thought to have been a voltage fluctuation or brake issues, so the Georgian government invited experts from the Doppelmayr Group, the manufacturer and installer of the lift. They also employed the help of international experts to conduct an impartial investigation, specifically Bureau Veritas, for its expertise in ski lift inspection. After a few days of investigating the site of the accident, this was their official report. Based on the records from a memory device, there was a voltage drop which stopped the ski lift. However, after the ski lift stopped, the operator should have turned on a nearby diesel generator to bring skiers to a point from where they would vacate the ski lift. See, a chairlift is basically just two connected pulleys, and a motor keeps the cable moving in one direction by exerting force on those pulleys. However, after the voltage drop, the motor wasn't able to deliver power, resulting in a state of freefall. If the mass is equal on both sides of a pulley, everything will stay where it is. But on a fully packed ski lift, the mass will never be equal. Dozens of riders fill the chairs moving uphill, adding thousands of pounds to one side of the pulley, while the other side sat virtually empty. Without the diesel generator or any other forces being applied, gravity took hold of all that mass, gaining in speed as it sent riders careening backwards towards imminent danger. Following the investigation, the deputy director of Mountain Resorts and the head of Gudauri Mountain Management both resigned. Charges were filed against the two operators working the lift that day, and they face from two to five years in prison if convicted. 
A press release published by the prosecutor's office reads, The individuals responsible for the safety and operation of the ropeway violated the rules and failed to ensure its safe management. Okay, so it was the two operators' faults, but still, how did this happen? So many things had to go wrong for the sequence of events to unfold. Experts at Bureau Veritas reported there was human error, but their original wording was, after the chairlift stopped, the operator had to introduce specific sequence of procedures, and after implementation, the operator had to switch the chairlift onto the diesel generator. And you won't believe how convoluted these procedures can get. On a well-designed ski lift, a low voltage automatically triggers a sequence of events. The backup battery kicks in to power the control box, which in turn activates both the service and emergency brakes. Once the brakes have taken hold, the diesel generator procedures can be executed. Simple. However, when there's no automation, all safeties need to be manually activated. So if there's a voltage drop, operators would have to get to a separate emergency power box to switch the main power off and the battery power on for the console. Then, they'd run back to the console to manually activate the brakes. Lastly, the lift is put into an evacuation mode, which cuts all power to the motors to prepare for the switch to the generator. All of that has to go right just to get to the diesel generator procedure, and trust me, it doesn't get any less convoluted from here. Typically, there's a designated room for the generator. Once the lift operator is in contact with the control room, the generator operator begins physically connecting the generator to the ski lift's drive shaft. Then he starts the engine and gives it time to rev to the appropriate torque required to counteract the weight of the chairs and riders. Once the proper torque is reached, the generator operator gives the go-ahead to the lift operator to disengage the brake. And when the generator operator sees that brake disengaging, he throws the clutch. And if all that is done correctly, then the riders can slowly be moved to safety. But in this case, it wasn't done correctly, and the lift started to experience rollback. This is where the design gets downright scary. In evacuation mode, certain safety features are bypassed, like the braking system. The emergency brake will not engage unless all brakes were manually reset first. The lift operator could hit that emergency stop button as much as he wants, but all it'll do is cut the power to the motors. The most blatant error in this entire situation is the last failsafe. On most lifts, if the bull wheel moves backwards, even just a few inches, a rollback fault is activated. It shuts down the movement mechanically, preventing an event like this from ever occurring. But on this lift, no such mechanism was in place. Ultimately, the lift operators were the ones on site for the accident, which is why the blame was placed on them. The most realistic theory is that the power was transferred from the generator to the lift before the proper torque was reached. Either the brake was released too soon by the lift operator, or the clutch was thrown too soon by the generator operator. And because there was no rollback fault, gravity took hold. Then, the lift operator kept smashing the emergency stop button, but because it was in evacuation mode, nothing happened. Then, after two minutes, someone remembered to hit the reset, finally allowing the emergency brake to engage. However, there are a lot of things that could have been done to prevent this from ever occurring. If there was no automation, obviously that's the first problem. Think about it. You see the lift slowing down, and you have to run to the emergency power box, turn the main power off, the auxiliary power on, come back, throw the switch for the emergency brake, all before gravity takes hold of everything. That's a lot of pressure. Next is the evacuation mode disabling the brakes. In an emergency, the emergency stop should reset and engage the brakes, regardless of the mode. Last and most glaring is the lack of a rollback fault. No matter what errors are made in procedure, this situation would never be possible with that safety measure in place. So, are the operators responsible? Technically, yes. But are they actually responsible? No fucking way! Doppelmayr Group is a well-respected manufacturer, but just because something hasn't changed in decades doesn't mean that it shouldn't. If you get a ski lift installed in your resort and opt for a model with no rollback fault, if you said no to save a few bucks, then you are the one that deserves to be staring down that prison sentence, not your employees. Have you ever had a skiing experience gone wrong? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching everybody, I will see you next time.